Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we select which is better, bourbon, Indiana, or bourbon, Missouri. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Kathy Cool and Ryan Thompson. Hey, gang, what's up? Hey, guys. guys. Yeah, so we're going to compare and contrast bourbon, Indiana versus bourbon, Missouri, and uh, ultimately, we're going to decide what is better. Uh, and uh, we'll get to that after the break. For right now, McNew said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, McNew? Okay, so as we're recording, it's a long weekend, and people go out and do recreational outdoorsy shit. Some okay. people do. Some people, not uh, us. Other not people. Us. <laughs> other Sorry, people. Some people do. But, and I'm here for it. I'm like, that's Which we do during the week as well. That's yeah, cool. But what is one thing that you cannot wrap your head around where you're like, why the fuck would you do that? Why does that look fun? What, what is it? Like, what is it? Ice climbing in the wintertime. Ice climbing. Ridiculous. Ice climbing. That's ridiculous. That's oh, no, no. I like to do a bunch of climbing in the summertime. Yeah, well, it t- sure does. Good point, KK. Good point. Oh, yeah. Well, there's, point. she's one of those. Yeah, she's got you. <laughs> it is the most ridiculous thing that a lot of people around my parts are, are way into. Right. And I just don't understand it for the life of me. Okay. What about okay. rock climbing? Like, is yeah, there's, I can understand that a little bit more. So rock climbing is, it, is quite popular here. Is it okay. literally like a frozen mountain? They're trying to like get some hooks in and climb up. Like, it's not. Yeah, it's climb? a f- frozen waterfalls. That's mm-hmm. fucking insane. Yeah, it's terrible. It's, and I don't people and you do it in the shadows in wintertime and ice is falling on you. You're getting water melted on you. Like anything can happen at the any second. It's just ridiculous. That sounds uh, miserable. It does yeah. not sound Agree. like a good time. Agree. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's that's my contribution. To Here, here's one that I don't understand. Uh, and it'll be controversial uh, because there'll be people that uh, that like to do this and, and don't understand why someone wouldn't like to do it. And I, I, this isn't a a moral issue. Uh, matter of fact, I uh, you know I, I think it's a, a necessary thing. Uh, but hunting, I'm not into. I don't understand why you'd want to be outside. Number one, why you want to kill an animal? Number two, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, for food. Oh, you need some money? Do I need to help you out? It, it, let me know. I, I'd be more than happy. <laughs> Yeah, is, it, is it rough times or something? You gotta eat gamey animals, and and, and what? what and there's really hunting. I, I mean, you're you're hunting an animal, and it it has you have a gun, and it doesn't, and and uh, and, and you're you, you know you know where it's at, where it and, uh, houses all. I mean, I don't, I don't. It doesn't. Grocery like stores everywhere. What's that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Go to the grocery, grocery store. store. What I don't understand too is is these guys that go on safaris and stuff, and they just basically yeah. uh, ha- have an animal. They're like, okay, we got him caged, and he's going to be in here. Just go in there and shoot him. Uh, boy, that's exciting. That's that's fun. Oh boy, that's yeah, bullshit. That's, yeah. That's- so I have heard just recently. I think it was on Rogan's podcast or something that there's a hunting DNA gene or something in, inside people. Like only like ten percent of people have this hunting DNA gene where they have to go out and hunt. It's like in them, right? They got to do it. I got We've got a lot of hunters on our session, team. Is it true? I, I don't know. Are those I, called serial sure. killers? Uh, is that <laughs> <what you're talking laughs> about, Ryan? Is that what Sociopaths. 
Yeah. But we uh, uh, we are certainly in a, a big hunting area here in the middle of Colorado. Yeah, so there's so a lot of hunters around here. A lot of hunters in Missouri. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. and there's a conservation side to it, I guess. I That's know that I, my I, boss what, and his son went I, elk hunting and brought back all this elk. And let me tell you, that is some good meat. Elk is good. Most of these aren't though. Most are like deer, terrible. Deer, I could no, yeah, yeah. I could live it's without like a, eating yeah. deer. But but elk, I agree. Elk is is good. But it uh, depends yeah. how hungry you are. Uh, well, sure. That's, that's gonna be <laughs> just about keep that in mind. <laughs> but you know, and, and of course, what hunters want to say is there's no apex predators, and uh, you know we 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 have an important role in the healthy ecological system. I'm like, yeah, because of hunters killing the apex predators that are now in turn it means we don't have them anymore uh, to hunt the deer and the shit that gets overpopulated. So I don't know. It's a yeah. Look at what a, happened to that bear in Jefferson County. Yeah. Poor little guy. Heidi hit him with the car. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I wonder how long it took her to find him. Oh, get yeah. him out into the road. Yeah. Oh, get, no, drag no, him no. on the road. Yeah. Jim, yeah, help me. Thing seems miserable too. Like they're waking up at like three fucking thirty to yeah. be in a blind by five. I'm like, but why? And it's yeah. cold. It's cold as fuck. It's cold. When yeah. they go, I'm like, why? 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 Why does this bring you joy? I, right. I can't wrap my head around. I that don't want a sport oh. where I have to rub deer urine on myself. That's <laughs> that, that's that's not a sport I'm interested in. Oh, I got. <laughs> Cover like myself in deer like, urine. That's good. Her her husband does that, and she's like, she has a separate washer and dryer in the garage she's like you are not bringing those in where i do normal laundry she makes him do his shit out there she's like <laughs> and, and a big part of hunting is is yes yeah, all right you're shooting an animal you're cleaning it you're packing it out i get all that but a lot of it's the camaraderie as well right amongst sure. your buddies your friends your your half of it's just going out into the woods and getting playing away cards, from, play cards. When, I, yeah. when i play cards it's really the cards is kind of part of it but really it's just about hanging out with your friends right you know People so I like often it. joke around with my hunting buddies when they disappear for four days in the woods hunting. I'm like, oh, so you're going, you're going hiking with hiking with a gun. That's what you're doing. Right. <laughs> they, they often don't come back with anything. Right. So they're just hiking with a gun through the woods. So yeah. What I find too is most of my friends that like to hunt, when I meet their wives, I'm like, oh, okay, now I know why you like to go out in the woods for three oh. or four days. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you get a little alone time. Now I get it. Now it now makes it sense. Makes <laughs> Might be no. some of that going you know on. You know I just wish I, I could married, read all the emails you're going to get from this. If I was oh, married yeah. to her, I would be a hunter too. I get it now. Okay. Some yes. of that going on. Oh, hell yeah. There's a lot of that shit going on. <laughs> yeah, I got to get away from the old lady. This is the only thing that's going to save this marriage. Yeah. Got to go yeah, hunt. Got to go get some yeah. food. Yeah. Easier. Just so that's that's the truth of hunting. There, I just gave you all the scoop. There's the real truth on hunting. Uh, uh, Kathy, what's your answer to this? Uh, any outdoor activity that you just... I Well, it, I guess it's... I mean, you have to do it outdoors, and this is the time of year when it starts, but fireworks. <laughs> fireworks. I fucking hey, hate them. I love them. It's just nonstop. Now, there's no season anymore for fireworks. I hate them. It's love just fireworks. they're going all the time. Yeah. One of oh. my one of my regular bars I used to go to, they're having fundraisers because the the general manager's husband blew his hand off. Well, sure. Stupid fireworks. Well, well what are you gonna do? There's houses that like I drive to work and I'm like, that house got burnt by fireworks last July and they're still working <laughs> on it. It sounds like a war zone when it's happening. I, it, I just don't get it. I it's just not for me. No, no, I, don't hang in your neighborhood. I, this sounds like fun to me. Yeah, I love come to my neighborhood. I, I am nope. so surprised when I get up the next day and I walk outside and there aren't like burnt out cars and houses in like it just sounds like the whole place is going down <laughs> and I go outside and there's just like sticks in my yard like no, oh. I think there's and so I used to get in bottle like, rocket right, fights with my right, neighbors I, I used to do all that fun stuff uh, hold them in my hands and shoot them at people sure. but now that I'm a grown I'm just so over it yeah. So yeah. I was literally a toddler and my grandpa would let us play with fireworks, like Roman candlers, candles and all of that. Like he made a little holder for us so we wouldn't burn our little hands. Oh, and I sure. still have it. Well, it was a and safety first. Safety, safety first. first, of course. Let a three-year-old yeah. play with that. But no, so my birthday is like butts into 4th of July weekend. So I kind of always thought they were for me. 
and my family let me believe that for a very long time. So I'm still very much like, oh, those are for me. I love it. Those are for you. <laughs> yeah. This is celebrating McDo. Celebrating me. McDo, you asked the question, what is an outdoor activity that you just cannot grasp, which I would think just anything. Oh, walk into no. the car. Uh, like no. as no. if I'm gonna walk all the way there. I can do some outdoorsy shit like drink on patios or go. Taking fishing, the cart the back to the corral. But, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> That's my least favorite activity. I don't even do it. I, and then I just say, if I feel threatened, I mean, I just walk. I just walk. Oh, I just, God. I like, Steve don't even do it. letting this go. I just, <laughs> like, don't even do it. I just walk because my physical safety <laughs> is more important than a cart. <laughs> Let me get to my point. <laughs> <laughs> unless it, <laughs> unless someone else has left one and hit McNew's car, then it's the most uh, the, the biggest fucking thing ever. What the hell? Are you crazy? Like my car isn't going to have a dent in it because it's my own damn fault. I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> True. Bumpers I won't even know on. where it came from. <laughs> McNew is uh, just beloved and all those people think she's, you know, really got it together and cool and all this. And, you know, she manages to do it all. And then she shows up and her, her bumpers taped on. I mean, it's been a while, Steve, that was three years ago. Yeah. Well, I don't still happen. I don't forget. I still happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <that's what> <laughs> Goddamn taped on. Oh my God. Does anyone have any tape? Yeah, no, it was literally falling off that poor uh, car. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, mine is people that go camping in these giant ass RV campers and campgrounds, right? <laughs> They're not even taking them anywhere fun. They are going 10 miles down the damn road to a campground with a nasty little pond where you're going to have neighbors just like you do in your fucking neighborhood. Like, okay, if you're going to get one and go across country and see some national parks, I get it. That seems cool. But you're literally taking a second mortgage out to go 10 minutes down the fucking road to hang out with people you don't even like. I don't understand the fucking campground people. And they drive me crazy. <laughs> that's a, it's that's a, a great point, McNew. I'm with it you is, on that. That's a great point. I don't oh. get it. And like the lady I work with, I love her to death. And she's like, oh, yeah, we're going to the campground this weekend. She's like, I got to go get groceries. I got to do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, that seems like a lot of work on a weekend. That should be fun. That doesn't seem fun to me because you're still like making food and you're still cleaning it up and cleaning up your junk friends. Picking beer up your chicken and with your tongs and whatnot. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> why, why, why are you doing this? So I, if they yeah. do it like the hardcore way with the tent and the sleeping bag and they pack no, it You're okay with that. Then, That's the way yeah, to go. Okay. So I, if they go somewhere cool, like if you're going to go to a fucking campground, what's the point? It's dirty. It's gross. I go to the woods, go somewhere way remote where your phone doesn't work. That makes more sense. So to no me. campgrounds at all for you. Camp campgrounds are just no. gone. I hate that. McNew's them. elected president next year and, uh, and campgrounds are just gone. That you're gone. There's no need for them. I, I just, I can't, I make them make sense to me. Like you're no, taking you a can't. party. You with can't, so they're just going to close them all. No. Like, I could have a fire in my driveway, my cul-de-sac, and not have to do all that shit. Like, I just don't understand the concept. It seems to, it seems like a lot. <laughs> okay. 100% McNew. I'm with you Thank on that you. one. Thank I like you. camping. But if I'm going camping, I'm going way out in the fucking sticks somewhere. Yeah, okay. that makes sense to me. You're going to see some cool yep. stuff. Maybe, like, camp by a lake or a river. It's going to be pretty. They're just, like, in a fucking parking spot that's gravel with maybe a tree. I don't understand uh -huh. how that's like getting back to nature. <laughs> Camping to me is a hotel room that I have to like walk downstairs to the Starbucks to get my morning coffee. Yeah. That's yeah. also fun. I understand that more than yeah. I understand. That's, RV. that's as far as I'll go. <laughs> Camping. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I mean, me too. I'm not, a, I don't do, get into the camping. It's just, I'm not, to, there's nothing good about camping. When it comes my to my me. aunt and uncle do it and they, they retired and they're like, oh, we're going to buy this RV. We're going to travel the country. So like, as long as they do that, it's okay. No, they don't do that. They take it and they park in a campground in Florida and that is where they stay and they don't leave. I'm like, what was the point? Buy a beach house, buy a condo, buy something nice. Why are you doing this? I, and some I, of these RV campers are crazy pricey too these days. Are. Oh yeah. I get mortgage. It's insane. Mm -hmm. I'm like, buy a boat instead. Buy a boat. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Literally anything else. I just, I can't. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, it is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? I'll go first. I've got something called Blanton's. Blanton's. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> 
Oh, it's good. That was good. I, I that was one of your worst ones ever. I'm proud of that. I'm proud. Of, I, I, you know what? I will have Ryan go next, so at least I'll have the lead through one person. Go ahead, Ryan. Quiet <laughs> on the set. Quiet on the set. Yeah, you can't get quiet enough. Yeah. Uh, well, since I'm here at hanging out at the distillery, I de uh, decided to pull a little uh, 118 proof two year bourbon here, a little tenth mountain okay. in the house. Right. Let's see what we got. Nothing, nothing. I've got the lead. What What is in the small barrel right behind you? Well, over what looks like your right shoulder for us. Nothing. That is empty right now. It's a five liter that is empty. It's uh, just for retail. We sell those at our uh, at uh, our tasting. Okay, room. okay. I thought oh, you might yeah. have had something. All, the, something, these, some all, working these are, right are, all these are empty right now. All are empty. Okay. All right. McNew, you're next. I have West Fork whiskeys, bourbon finished, and peach brandy barrels. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. No, I've still got the lead. Here I am, Amazing. three people in, and I've got the lead uh, with my Blantons. Go ahead, Kathy. Well, I feel like I'm wasting this, but it's a brand new bottle. Okay. Wasters. I oh. thought we were talking about bourbon in Missouri, not bourbon Missouri. So I got some Missouri bourbon. Okay. No. No, I won. It was really silent over here. I wasn't here. I it won. was so awful. Demetrius, yeah, it are was you awful. listening? I won. This was so I, bad. I cannot believe Akeley actually won that with that yeah, pathetic yeah. work top that he had. I didn't. I won. So I agree, Akeley. I am I filing a complaint. Cheers, <laughs> that was incredible. That's like the worst win ever. <laughs> I am oh, shocked no, and appalled. It was, it was a good win. Uh, it was uh, a solid, I feel good about I it. I feel like this I'm is getting a win. silver, and you yeah, tell those uh, people not to be excited. That's getting a silver. <laughs> <laughs> all a right. win's a win, a win's a win. A win is a win. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, what we'll do next, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about bourbon, Missouri, or bourbon, Indiana. What do we think is better? We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We will also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Staven Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Hi, this is Rick Brenner, and you are listening to the Bourbon Daily. Shouldn't it be the legend? Yeah, maybe. 
Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about Bourbon, Indiana versus Bourbon, Missouri. Yes, we are. So here's how I think this one uh, plays out. Uh, we have two people from Missouri here, one from Indiana. Uh, we'll both present our, all three of us will present our cases, but uh, Kathy and I will uh, go for Bourbon, Missouri. Uh, McNew will be Bourbon, Indiana. And then Ryan will tell us what is better, Bourbon, Indiana or Bourbon, Missouri. All right. I would say that uh, one thing going for uh, Bourbon, Missouri, is the fact it is a kind of a outskirts of St. Louis, so it's a, it's a great place to if you're in St. Louis, nice little day trip type of thing, uh, right on on Highway 44. One of the cool things if you're just happy to driving through town and not even going through, they have two water towers, and of course both of them have the city name on the side that says Bourbon. So it's like, whoa, what's in that? Well, I wonder what's in that tower there. So it's kind of a, a neat thing if you're just driving through. So I. I'd say that's one of the first things that that I think of when I think of Bourbon, Missouri. Uh, McDowell, anything anything that stands out for you about Bourbon, uh, Indiana? No, oh, I kind of missed the concept of this show. <laughs> yeah, me Talking too. About bourbon made in Indiana versus Bourbon made in no, Missouri. No, no. Um, this town is up north from me, and I don't prefer okay. going Boy, up it's, north. It sounds good. So. Okay, she's she's okay, making a solid case here. She's making a good uh, bourbon. Missouri does have some, uh, you know, whiskey there. So the, there's a place that uh, I th they have like a distillery name. I don't even know what that is. The brand that it comes out of is Barrel King. So that is here in bourbon, Missouri, and uh, they do pretty well. More of a local thing. I don't think they they distribute outside of the state of Missouri. But if you're local, particularly if you're in the St. Louis area, I think you know who Barrel King is, and uh, yeah, they're bringing uh, bourbon back to bourbon, Missouri. So I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, uh, anything cool happening in Bourbon, Indiana, McNeil? Um, okay, so it is near South Bend. So if you're a Notre Dame fan, you can probably go catch a game, get your Irish on, and uh, check out Bourbon, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> How close to uh, Notre Dame is it? Uh, they're in the same county. Okay. In the same county, okay. So our Bourbon, Missouri, is on a river. So yeah. we have river activities like canoeing and floating. Yeah. Uh, both things go with drinking. Yes. Strong argument. Yeah. And Bourbon, Missouri is the only city named after our favorite drink. It's named after Bourbon, the whiskey, not named after the Bourbon family, uh, who was the French uh, uh, family of, of prominence. It's uh, true. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's right there. So that that is a cool thing, too, is the fact that we love Bourbon. We're the Bourbon Daily. It's We're on Route 66. After, uh, yeah, it's on Route 66, too. So that, that's a cool thing about bourbon. Uh, anything else? Uh, you've made a pretty solid case for bourbon Indiana so far, McNew. Anything else you want to add before so you I'm let that rush? I'm looking at their town website right now. Uh, yeah, uh, sounds fun, they, yeah. Well, they, they have, have a website, so there you go. Yeah, they do have a, it's a so nice website. Bourbon, Missouri, but okay. Um, they are fairly close to Chicago within an hour, <laughs> and they have a lot of, like, you know, Gang so, so, so the best like, thing about Bourbon, Indiana like, is you can get the hell out of there. You go to South Bend, you go to Chicago. That's why you want to go to Bourbon, Indiana. So then you can go somewhere else. So it's a launching point for a lot of other cool places to go. Uh, no, so when I, when I said it was close to Chicago, I meant like the cool old timey gangsters like Al Capone and those guys, like the bootleggers, sure, sure. like Bourbon, Indiana, you know, might have been a thing then. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. I think on that note, we're going to turn it over to our esteemed judge to tell us what is better, Bourbon, Indiana, or Bourbon, Missouri. I like both sides of the argument. Sure. sure. But before I get in, eloquently into... presented by both sides. <laughs> I call in our show notes, Akeley, I was with you that it was two different towns in two different states. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I knew we weren't talking about Bourbon from Indiana or Bourbon from Missouri. So I'm with right. you on that. So the fact that McNew didn't have a clue there was bourbon Indiana. Right. She had to I learn that today. Yeah. Cheating there. She, she was today years old when she learned that there was <laughs> bourbon Indiana. No, it existed. I just don't think about it because there's oh. nothing there. And, and Akeley's first <laughs> Did you Akeley's catch that, George? First, Akeley's first statement was that they have two water towers with bourbon on it. And there's Oh yeah, water. look at that. That's cool, it's right? Gorgeous. The water so, tower. Uh, to your point, is there just a shit ton of bourbon in there? Maybe. Maybe. We don't know. So, yeah, well, let's really go cool, find out. Really it cool sounds like then. a side trip. Mm -hmm. And then probably if you're in bourbon, Indiana, you can get the hell out and go bourbon, Missouri. Right, right. That's <laughs> that's what the, everyone wants to do there. We're, 
they have a sign as you get there how many miles to bourbon missouri yeah <laughs> <laughs> they followed it up with some water sports, some drinking uh, activities, if you will. Sure. Uh, another notch in the cap for Bourbon, Missouri. So I think it's pretty obvious that I'm uh, if I'm going to visit one of these two, I'm going Bourbon, Missouri. Hey, oh, Bourbon, yeah. Missouri wins. Knocks <laughs> off Bourbon, Indiana. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I feel like I'm a terrible ambassador for Indiana. So you guys can start for an apartment or something in Missouri. I'm, well I'm pretty sure last weekend when she was in St. Louis, I heard her say, I should just move to St. Louis about I 10 did. times. I'm like, I could just move. I should just live here instead. It seems I thought better. it was Arizona next. Huh? You know, that's a, a I go to Arizona when <laughs> she can live with KK in huh. in St. Louis. There you go. Got, Valid. His dogs, it's going to be fine. You know, it's baby, it's baby steps. You got to cross the river and then you go further. And west. you go, then you go. <laughs> baby Man, steps. <laughs> All right, there you go. So Bourbon, Missouri wins, knocks off Bourbon, Indiana. Uh, if you have a Bourbon town in your state, let us know, and we'll put it up against uh, our, our our own Bourbon, Missouri. So it should be fun. Uh, we'll wrap this one up, as we always do, by talking about where people can find us. Kathy, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram. I am KKCastStrength. All right, Ryan. Across all socials at 10th MTN Whiskey and our website's 10th Whiskey.com. That's 10th Whiskey with an E. All right, McNew. I'm on Instagram at McNew ABB. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us at the ABV Barrel Shop. We'd love to talk to you about whiskey and tell you what's going on, what our newest barrel picks are, that type of thing. You can try before you buy. So check us out at abvbarrelshop.com. If you're in St. Louis, come by and see us. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. Great job today, gang. Fardits will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. 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 Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. <laughs>